Welcome back, those returning to the channel, nearly subscribed, appreciate you being here, those maybe watching for the first time, hopefully you like what you hear, or at least enjoy it, you consider liking and subscribing, but before we get to the main topic, I want to, what I want to discuss here, I'm going to look at a little bit of Liverpool news first up, because a couple of players are not finishing the international duty, or duty, depending on how you say it, uh, as it uh, was meant to be due to one being sent off and red carded, meaning that they can't play the next game, and another being told, don't worry about playing the next match because it's on a bad pitch against very rough opposition. That being in Virgil van Dijk and Mohamed Salah. Van Dijk getting that second yellow card in the game against Hungary, and then coming back now to the Liverpool camp to rest and recover for the game against Chelsea next weekend, and Salah as well, not being risked manager, or at least the uh, Egyptian football camp said he had Sit this one out. Don't worry about it. Don't participate. Don't risk your health. Now, on top of all that, we also have to uh, remember that we do have still some players out. Obviously, Trent is still playing with the English team. I think Curtis Jones is there or, or out somewhere. Elliot's still injured, which which sucks. But we still have Soboslai with Hungary. We've got Diaz. We've got Nunez. And we've got McAllister with their respective teams in the South American uh, um, uh, crop down there. And we still have a few players out as well, um, notably Gravenberch being still with the Dutch team, which is going to be the main concern because if something happens to Gravenberch, as I've said many times and many Liverpool fans have said as well, that could be um, a bad one, a bad one for Liverpool fans because that DM position is really his at the moment. And if he were to get injured, we do have players who can fill in, but are they now going to be doing as good of a job as what Gravenberch is at the moment? Obviously, again, we've got Sober Slide doing his thing. We do also have the likes of McAllister. They're still doing their international duty, so hopefully they come back unscathed. And if we're just looking at this, um, that white is bright, Jesus. Damn. Uh, from the uh, Echo, uh, says Van Dyke played all bar one get a game for Liverpool this season, has been integral to them in the first 10 games. Salah been released from international duty after being let go by Egypt squad for their Cup Nation qualifier. And as it says here, with all bar Liverpool, South American trio of McAllister, Diaz and Darwin, one with Argentina, one with Colombia, one with Uruguay, completed the international commitments by Tuesday. Reds coach Arne Slot will have several days to prepare an almost full strength squad for the Chelsea match. Obviously, Alisson is injured, so that won't be happening. Canate is out with France as well. And a few other players floating around. Robertson with Scotland, I would imagine. And we have, who else we got up top? Uh, Jota with Portugal. So we do have some players who are doing the international duty thing. But this is this is the main crux of the argument here. Are we going to be able to sustain this title charge as some people want to have us believe Liverpool are in? And look, let's keep it real. We are in a title charge at the moment. I still said that we're going to finish third. I maintain we're probably going to finish third just based on squad depth alone. I don't think we have the squad depth to go the distance in all these competitions unless we bungle ourselves out of a league cup or an FA cup or see what happens in the Champions League maybe then we focus excuse me all on the um on the Premier League but again we don't know where we're going to be at come November December start of 2025 we don't know at the moment so this is where we're going to go now to this yeah this exchange here on Never a Foul, only what, an hour ago, listening to it on the drive home from a gig. And a girl is, I suppose I will say somewhat controversial, but not really looking to nitpick at him. But I mean, what he said is my main you know, crux of the, the, the content and the context for this video, where he thinks that, you know, Liverpool, they're not going to be anywhere near City and Arsenal come the end of the season. And look, I still maintain we'll probably finish third. I don't think we'll have enough because of the squad depth, because of players that will be injured, coming in and out of the squad, maybe form dips and other players coming in maybe are not as good until the other players, you know, discover some of that form again. But let me just have a quick listen uh, or rather you have a listen and hear what was said here, because I, I do think Egal's thinking that Liverpool are going to drop massively and then that's going to allow them a little bit more breathing space to compete with Man City for this league once it um, eventuates, once the, the league starts you know, spreading out and people start finding their form. So let's have a listen. Let me get back to Liverpool. Go on, go on, go on, go on. I don't think Liverpool are going to be anywhere near City or Arsenal come down to the season in the title race. And I what? think it's early in the season. They've played some good side. They've played some re reasonable oh, yeah. sides. They've been relatively uh, injury-free. 
and we haven't seen them face any major adversity. They lost one game. They haven't really played any of the top teams yet. And now with Allison out, now that they're going to face a bunch of heavy hitters in the next... Well, you can only play what's in front of you. Like Tottenham last year, everyone said, Tottenham's on a mad one. We said, well, they can only play what's in front of them. They got their wins that they needed. However, they got them. Some controversial circumstances, a certain White Hart Lane match against a team that wears red from Liverpool. That was a bit of a, how's it going? Now, some people may agree in the chat, as I can see here, uh, Mo um, in the chat, you know, with the little wrench there. You might see it at the bottom there says Egal's got a point. Yes, Liverpool have not played anyone of of high substance. Obviously, Arsenal have played City. They've played Villa. They've also had Brighton come to to the Emirates and a few other teams as well. But you're conceding and and having to win at the depth uh, at the death rather than dig deep to get wins against Leicester. Or you've got Southampton scoring first against you. Granted, they equalised pretty much straight after, but. I mean, Liverpool at the moment still, the defence has been holding strong. The structure is there. There's no more chaotic ball. It's just still like clock ball, but calm, as many people have described it. So, yes, we haven't played anyone of, of high, shall we say, quality or standard with all due respect with the other clubs. But to say that, yeah, Liverpool are going to fall off and be nowhere near it because once they start playing the better teams, that it's all going to come to – the hinges are going to come off the, uh, the, the, the slot mobile – uh, I I don't know yet, but I am cautious and wary and at least have enough sense to realize that these players that we have with such limited players as well, we don't have a massive squad. People say, but yeah, Liverpool squad is better, etc. Yes, but in terms of challenging for a league, I don't know if it's going to be enough for us. I still maintain us to finish third though. Next couple of weeks, the Real Madrid's, the Arsenal's, the Man City's over the next two months, then we're gonna really see what you're on. And to the to the to the Liverpool fans in the chat that are getting their panties in a bunch, understand what I'm saying. Who have you played so far this To be fair, I mean a guy likes to pop off and have a go at people in the chat as well when he starts saying some madness. So I think it's all fair in love and war, so long as we don't go personal. But the footballing opinions, there's some big question marks behind them. Season. You've played Manchester United, who've been one of their worst starts in history. You lost to nothing in Forest. Outside of that, everyone else you beat, you should have beat. So stop acting like you guys are invincible. Stop acting like hold you guys on, are this hold amazing on, hold team. On, hold on. Stop only... acting like everything is fixed. Stop acting like no, Jurgen no, Klopp no, was the no, problem. No. You... I don't know who said Jurgen Klopp was a problem, but I don't think anyone's saying that everything has been fixed. I think we still have some issues there. But the irony is that a lot of people are saying, well, Arsenal are a fix now. Arsenal are great when, again, you're playing against teams that are newly promoted, maybe relegation fodder, and you're conceding goals at home, sometimes by twos. That's a bit of a question mark at the moment. You're getting the wins. That's the main thing. But conceding goals. And it's the man who said, you know, the defense is going to be key. And I said, the defense is good. But if you're not scoring goals, you ain't really going to be winning games. You still no. have underlining issues in this team, and to think you've bridged the gap with no signings and, well, to, and, go, just, go ahead, and just and just go. Arnie Slot's tactics, it could be a new manager bounce. It could be a situation when one team bounce. figures you out. A new manager bounce. We were not rubbish where we had a good squad and we finished in fifth or sixth, and now we've got the bounce. Now we had the same squad last season that we have now with the addition of Chiesa, not sure what his situation is at the moment. The players that we have are still there playing some good stuff, playing on form. Gravenberch is a player that has been, I don't know where the hell this Gravenberch has come from. McAllister's doing his thing. sobersai has got a slightly different role or a different role. Diaz is performing and getting some numbers. Salah, I've been one of his critics so far, but he still pops up with the goal and assist here or there. Jota's, you know, bagging a few goals. Darwin off the bench. And the defence are doing their thing for us as well. I mean, Allison being out is a, is a big one, but we have a good replacement in Kelleher in goal. So that's fair. But to say that now all of a sudden it's a new manager bounce or that this is all new manager bounce and slot's going to be found out, et cetera, et cetera. Honestly, Egal wants Liverpool to drop off or he thinks we're going to drop off, and then Arsenal are going to take their spot. Because as long as Liverpool are still floating around there, there's still squeaky bums in that Arsenal camp because they know Liverpool can can do a few things, even with the squad they have, without the additions at the moment. 
it, that is all dependent on the squad that we have available for the match days. That's why I say I don't think we have the squad depth to go all the way, which is why I think we're finishing third. But man's talking like we're going to completely collapse out of out of what she hoped maybe. He needs to rejig and figure out a new thing. We've seen it with Tottenham. We've seen it with other teams in the past. Don't make it. Don't make it seem like an early good start to the season means you're now going to do this for the rest of the year. I think the same thing as last year, where you finished seven points behind us and nine points behind City. You're going to do it again. You're going to finish eight or ten points behind the two of us. Oh. Eight or ten points behind us. Why though? Why though? For me, it's the players. Maybe that's just hope there. I'm not sure where he's going out with this. But Arsenal haven't played that great. They've been getting the wins, yes, and some will say it's champions mentality and all that sort of stuff. We've been playing, some will say, the better football. It's boring, it's it's slow, it's not as rock and roll. Yes, but the same way that people are saying, well, Arsenal are playing this free-flowing uh, football, now they're playing this controlled football. Well, sometimes you need to change and adapt so you can win the games. And if that's how we do it, then so be it. I said I'll take shitty one new wins all the way through to the end of the season if he means we win the league again. Love you to you, Dean. I hear, I hear what you're saying, yeah, but you you got to remember, yeah, we can only beat what's in front of us. There's that's true. Pause, that's just all we can do. Like, it's not our fault we ain't played none of these so-called teams, but we still got to beat every Premiership team can beat anyone on their day, yeah. And and we've shown we've shown the whole league, yeah. We ain't made no signings, and we're still taking care of business. Even this game, we look shit. And we're still taking care of business, yeah? That's fair. Like, don't concede no goals. Van Dijk looks colossus now. Tonight is coming through like a madman. Like, every year we'd never have Alisson in goal anyway. He, he misses half a season every season anyway. So this is nothing to me. It's nothing at all. Salah's in great form. Diaz, what's it? Diaz is in good form, to be fair. Come on, man. Like, end of the day, form is temporary. Problems, huh? Form is temporary. Or Miss Temporary, I want to move over to a little bit here where Cass, uh, not Cass, sorry, Daps actually um, makes a good point, which goes to what I'm talking about with the uh, squad depth of of Liverpool. Over, over the last maybe year or so, people are forgetting how he landed there. But I don't know, man, for me, I'll be real. When I look at Liverpool, I've, I think Liverpool have enough going forward that if, look, if Salah's a bit off, Jota. If, mm -hmm. if Jota's a bit off, Diaz is stepping up. I think uh, I think Gakpo can come in. Do you know what? I'll even say, however, Nunes will pitch in here and there and whatever. Um, I think the biggest area for Liverpool is the one that we all think it is. It's can Graven Birch can carry on this form, right? And also, I'll be real what you said about Van Dijk and Canate. It's It's... Just before he goes on to the defence, that that's the key thing. Graven Birch is he's still going to be the player there. Like, he's been getting the praise rightly so. Yes, for me, we still need a proper DM, a, a proper number six. Maybe Graven Birch can have a different role moving forward because he is good on the ball. Maybe he can do something in another position, maybe further up or advanced or in a different role. But it's going to be peak if he gets an injury and he's out for a few weeks or you know touch wood a, a couple of months. That would be. A bit of a question mark. Like now, Odegaard is out for Arsenal, potentially Saka as well. Rodri is out for City, along with De Bruyne, who's on and off. He plays a couple of games, gets a knock, and he's out for a couple of games. Obviously, we know Oscar Bob with his injury, RK as well. So there are players that are missing for either team. Chelsea with La Lavia half the time, he, he gets an injury here or there. So there are still players in, in every squad that do have you know, injuries, and it's like, how do we need to overcome them do we have the place to fit in and take over and do a job whilst they're gone yes we do are they of the same skill set or to the same effect probably not probably not but the thing is everyone also always wants to point towards liverpool so are oh, you and had you lost to forest you're not that good you only lost you're in one one nil away to palace this blah 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 i said i'll take one nil wins stinky one nil wins all the way through to the end of the season but it's like yeah, someone a comment says, "See, are we falling off? Or are we not playing anyone? It's like we can only play who's in front of us. So be it. We have to face Chelsea next. That's going to be a test. I, I think it's going to be a test. Certain other Liverpool fans think it's light work, but then obviously Arsenal, City. Then we've got the Madrids. Then we, yeah, we're going away in Europe and things like that. It's all going to come to a head. I think November is going to be the the month where we actually see 
the clubs and see where they're going to sort of like maybe maybe end up. Will there be an injury between them two as well? Because Canate is injury prone. Van Dyke's getting older. That's true. I think if Liverpool can keep the Van Dyke and Canate partnership cooking and Graven Birch can continue this form throughout the season, I think Liverpool are in the title race with ease. Like yeah, with I've, I've, got, I've got some, I've got some, uh, <laughs> in, I think for a gal for what he said, a gal got to remind himself like if Saka is to be injured for a few weeks and still on Erdegaard anyways, regardless, you're facing Chelsea, you're facing Liverpool, That's a test. you're facing Chelsea Newcastle away, I believe. Like Raza. you got you got some mad fixtures coming up yourself, as much as Liverpool might do. Last year, uh Liverpool firmly in a title race with Kelleher in goal, if you're yeah. being real with it. But yeah, Allison was missing for like what two months, three months or something. Bro, he played a big part for us. The same, by the way, they're in the same squad. I think Liverpool are in a much better. I've, I'm going to be honest. This this Liverpool is better they're than more difficult Liverpool to last beat year. For me. More difficult to beat. Yeah, more, more organized. You know, I think they got they got one yeah. extra addition. I suppose in Chiesa, if he can stay fit or whatever. I think they're going to. I hate. I hate to say it. I believe. Liverpool are going to be up there. Really? You know, actually, really? you know what? I've been, I, I think they'll be there with PAC, you. you know? I, I think they'll be in there with you and yeah, City so. and maybe even a dark horse in Chelsea. Like, Keller is good. Like, he's not crap. Dark horse he's in Chelsea. Crap. I mean, it's, okay. But he's not, obviously, he's not Alisson. No one's Alisson. But, but this and is no the thing. Is. No one's like Alisson's the best goalkeeper in the world. Like, we just talk about their squad. So, yeah, that's reckon so in any case. But yeah, the, the next matches that Liverpool have is going to be. Uh yeah, it's it's gonna show where we where we end up, where we're going to be come the end of October, start of November, and then see where we are. Because if we're looking even here just now, have a peep at this. So we've got Chelsea at home, Leipzig in the Champions League, Arsenal away, Brighton away in the EFL Cup, then we've got Brighton at home in the Premier League, then we've got Leverkusen at home, then we've got Villa at home as well. And that's from the 21st to the 10th, or 21st of October, well, for me, or 20th of October till the um, 9th or the 10th of November. That's just the next couple of matches. Now, that is going to be something. Then we've got Southampton away, Madrid at home late November, then we've got City at home. Then we've got Newcastle away, Everton away, Girona in the Champions League again, Fulham at home, Tottenham away. So that October-November period is going to be key. And as I say, the players we need to keep with us, that's going to be the the obviously the, the key factor in there, how slot rotates players, the players' fitness as well. If Allison will be back by then, some people are saying he's going to be out for four weeks. I'm saying six weeks. Well, we'll wait and see what happens. But you know what? The this game against Chelsea is going to be interesting. There'll be a proper preview for it. I'm, I'm guessing so. Uh, players though, players, players, players. The players that we have, if they're going to be there and playing relatively healthily, we're in with a shout. I still don't know if we're going to go all the way. I think there'll still be something that just goes wrong for us internally, not externally, and it's just going to be it. And then people say, "Ha ha, we told you so. We told you so." Like, some of us knew this already. Wasn't news for us, which is why it's going to get back to why are you people telling us that we're so good, we, we're title contenders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, when we're telling you that I we don't think we have enough in us to win this league for whatever reason. People say being pessimistic, you're complaining, you're you're being you know, negative and stuff like that. Like obviously, I want us to win the league. I just don't think it's possible with the squad we have right now. If we if we're there or thereabouts come the end of December, January kicks in, transfer window, and we bring a couple of players in there, a proper number six, another centre back, a forward, or another midfielder, whatever it is, then I might say, okay, now let's see where we go from here. Until then, we keep it calm, we keep it stepping. And that's all I've got. You let me know your thoughts down below. Big ups to the boys on Never a Foul, Egal as well. Look, footballing opinions aside, no hate, no malice with anybody out there and that is where i leave this one see you later